Hello, my name's Carl Kochar and I'm a Cloud Solutions Architect at Microsoft. This short demonstration provides an overview of how to configure an analog phone as a Microsoft Teams device via the SIP gateway. When I created this video in February 2023, analog telephony adapter support for SIP gateway was still in public preview. If you're watching this overview and Microsoft's analog telephony adapter support is generally available, Please review the public documentation for guidance and any changes. For specific ATA model support, please check the documentation, which will become available post GA. The current plan is for ATAs from Audio Code, Cisco, and Poly to be supported. The first thing to do when you log on to the ATA for the first time is to ensure it's upgraded to the correct firmware version. Then we need to remove the existing ATA configuration and apply the Microsoft SIP Gateway Provisioning Servers URL. We do this using the parameters shown in the table and applying them one by one. The next step is to upload an empty configuration file and load it into the ATA. After this, we go back to the admin page and add the SIP gateway provisioning URL for the region we're deploying in. In my case, I'm based in the UK, so use the EMEA URL. After we've applied the new value, the ATA should pull down its configuration and reset. We now need to switch to the Teams admin console to provision the analog phone. The initial device profile creation is done from the phone screen. In this example, we're going to add the MAC address manually and select the hardware ID type. This allows us to add the ATA's MAC address and the appropriate port number that relates to the physical FXS port on the ATA we want to attach an analog Teams phone to. We add the location information and save the configuration. The next step is to generate a verification code that we'll use to associate the analog phone connected into the port we just defined in the Microsoft tenant. This is done by dialing star 55 on the phone followed by the verification number, after which we should receive a confirmation tone back. After a few moments, the device should now be ready for signing. To do this, we generate a verification code and follow the user device signing procedure. Just as a point of interest, in my example, Lee has an operator connect number assigned and also a caller line ID policy. It was interesting to observe that when Lee made an outbound call from his analog phone across the operator connect platform, the configured service number was correctly presented. 